Hi everybody. In this video I'm just going to uh, talk about where I've got to with my 3D printed clockwork motor project. Um, it's going to be sort of like an informal, like a workshop note type of thing. So I'm just sort of chatting through what I've done, where I'm going and what I'm hoping to achieve at the end of it. Uh, let me know what you think of it as a format. Uh, it's not something, I mean I'm new to this whole YouTube game anyway and uh, yeah as I say let me know what you think and don't forget to like and subscribe. So I've got all the parts spread out like that but I reckon it should be able to make possible to make the whole thing a lot more compact by sort of stacking everything. So I should be able to move this gear sort of in that position there and then this escapement fork there and then everything will be packed much closer together and then I can sort of put a lid on it and then that's my clockwork motor. So I had to change some of the parts around so I've made slightly different versions of these parts. So here we go. This is a little bit bigger than that one. I've made a one a um, escapement wheel with a larger diameter hole in it that goes over there and then instead of having a fork with a hole in it like that I've now got a fork with a pin and the pin goes in the hole in the top of this gear there and the only disadvantage the only or the only problem with it now is that the whole thing is kind of you know it sort of splays out like that and that's not going to be a problem once I've got a box to put everything in because they'll these will be fixed at that point there so for as a temporary measure I've made this little plate and the plate goes there and that sort of locks just stops everything spreading out and there it is so we've now got the whole thing a lot more compact all this lot can go and uh, everything's sort of stacked I'm just having to hold this in place because because of the vibrations in the fork that tends to lift out and then the whole thing sort of explodes out. Um, but once it's once it's a box and it's got a fixed top and a bottom and then there's a joiner piece between the two, everything should be just fine and dandy. So I've made like a case to put all the parts of the clockwork motor in. That's the bottom, that's the top and then they're going to slot together using those. They're just It's just a friction fit at the moment. Those all slot together like that. Um, I might have to change that. I, I, could, I can sort of, I could drill it and put a screw in it or I can, I'm sure I'll be able to find some different way of doing it. I mean that works as it is so who knows, we'll see. So I'll put this together and see how it goes. There's the, uh, this is the winder part with the, with the ratchet like that and then this goes on top of the spring there and then here, the purpose of that wall there is to stop the spring spilling out into the rest of the mechanism. So I'm going to put that into there. The other end of the spring goes on this pin. I might need to extend that pin because it's not, you know, it's, uh, it's that's going to pop off. But do the job for the moment. This is the reduction gear fits on there and this will be the drive gear in the final 
thing. The drive will come off this gear, there'll be a shaft or something like that. I'll do something like this where I've got a shaft on the end of it instead of it just being a... Um, at the moment it's just got a hole right the way through it. So that fits there. The escapement gear fits there. So now we have quite a big speed increase between the spring and the uh, escapement. And then the fork has got these, has got this pin on it. Pin sits inside that. And that's it. That's that's how that all fits together. And then the top goes over everything. So we've got a pin there and a hole there. The uh, winder goes through the hole. The pin goes into the fork. These two just push together by friction. That seems to work. And then, if I find the key, I'll wind it up and give it a go. There's the key. This is actually that the hole of the key is actually the wrong size for there, but it does work. So I can wind up the clockwork motor. Pleased with that, that's worked really well. So a few things that I'm going to change for the next version. You see there's that gap there, look, between the fork and the pin. Uh, that needs removing. So I reckon I can just shorten these by maybe a couple of mil, these two side pieces. I might thicken them up slightly because there's a little bit of flex in that that I don't want. And then as I say, this would be replaced by that sort there so that there's an output because at the moment it's like it's in a clockwork motor but it doesn't do anything it just um, it just clockworks um, but it doesn't I can't drive anything with it as such and my plan is to use this purple gear I think the speed of the purple gear is spot on I can use, so I can use the purple gear to drive some sort of automata or, or whatever, a little car or yeah, something like that. And then the other thing is this, which I've mentioned already, is to extend this pin because that just uh, that keeps flicking off just because it's too short. I, I can either extend it or I can make it a friction, can I make it a friction fit? I'm not really sure. Probably not. I'll think of something. So, there you go.